You are watching The Story. Every Monday, we bring you a deep dive into the fascinating lives of incredible people. The enemy brothers who founded Adidas and Puma. Welcome to Alux.com, the place where future billionaires come to get inspired. If you're not subscribed yet, you're missing out. Hey there, Aluxers, and welcome back. Adidas and Puma are household names, but you probably don't know the story of how these successful companies came to be. It's a story of brothers who started out as business partners and ended up as bitter enemies and rivals. If you've ever tried to work with family, maybe you understand how this could happen. But these brothers took it to a whole nother level. Today we're telling you the story of the enemy brothers who founded Adidas and Puma. And there's definitely something to learn from the success of each of these brothers. So let's start back at the beginning. Who are the Dossler brothers? Born in the small town of Herzegenerich, Germany, about 12 miles outside of Nuremberg, Rudolf, who was born in 1898, was two years older than his brother. The brothers went by the nicknames Rudi and Adi. Their family came from a long line of weavers, but once the textile industry was overtaken by industrialization, Rudi and Adi's father, Christoph, learned the art of shoemaking. In 1913, Adi began an apprenticeship as a baker, but he was much more interested in athletics. After completing his apprenticeship, he decided against being a baker and instead began to learn about shoemaking from his father. He started thinking about how different types of shoes could potentially affect how athletes perform in different sports. After serving in the army for over a year at the end of World War I, Adi decided to start his own shoemaking business that focused on innovative athletic footwear beginnings. Addy started the business in his mother's laundry room, but he had many challenges in the beginning. Germany was devastated after the war, and there were very few sources of materials or machines. But Addy was creative and resourceful. He scavenged for debris left over from the war to find materials he could use, such as army helmets with leather that could be used for soles and parachutes that could provide silk for slippers. He also created a leather milling machine that could be powered by a stationary bicycle instead of electricity. Addy had a strong vision for a unique shoe company that would focus on specialized shoes for various sports. He was constantly experimenting with innovative designs and materials like shark skin and kangaroo leather to see what would be most effective for different sports. Rudy, on the other hand, had planned on becoming a police officer after the war, but saw promise in his brother's shoe business and eventually decided to join him on July 1, 1923. They officially opened the Dossler Brothers Sports Shoe Factory one year later and began making football boots and track shoes with hand-forged spikes. By 1926, they moved the company out of the family home and were producing 100 shoes a day with a staff of 25 people. Both brothers joined the Nazi party in May 1933, and Addy saw the opportunity to expand production by supplying shoes to sports club in the Hitler Youth Movement. In 1934, 34-year-old Addy married 16-year-old Katta Martz, which would lead to problems later on, but more about that in a minute. The brothers would experience their big break just two years later. The 1936 Olympics Josef Weitzler, the coach of the German Olympic track and field team, became an early fan of their specialized shoes. He became a vital consultant for the brothers, and this relationship gave them unique access to the athletes at the 1936 Berlin Olympics. Athletes had worn the brothers' shoes in the 1928 and 32 Olympics, but the Berlin Olympics gave them the opportunity to showcase their products in their home country. But their greatest exposure came from American Jesse Owens, who accepted a pair of shoes from Addy and went on to win four gold medals while wearing the shoes. This led to a major spike in business internationally, and by 1938, their company was producing 1,000 pairs of shoes a day with a specific design for 11 different types of sports. But then World War II started and everything changed. From Partners to Enemies while Rudolf was conscripted into the army, Addy was permitted to remain as the head of the factory. Rudy resented this and thought his younger brother was trying to take over control of the company, which very well could have been the case. Rudy even threatened to have the factory shut down just so his brother would have to go to war as well. 
Although Addy continued to make shoes, the majority of the production was geared toward weapons and supplies for the war effort. Near the end of the war, Rudy defected from the army but was caught and arrested. He was in prison for about a month before the Allied liberation in May of 1945. After the war, tensions got even worse between the brothers. Rudy was still angry at how Addy had taken over during the war, and the brothers also disagreed on the focus of the business. While Addy was more concerned with developing the best shoes, Rudy was more focused on profitability and cash flow. Rudy also thought Addy's wife was interfering with the business too much, and personal conflict bled into the business as there was a constant bickering in the household, where Addy, Rudy, their wives, and their mother all lived. The final breaking point may have been when the brothers were investigated for their ties to the Nazi party, and they each tried to save themselves by throwing their brother under the bus. In 1948, Rudolf left along with one-third of the staff and went on to the other side of the river in their small town, where he began his own shoe company, which was initially called Ruda, and then Puma. After the brothers were done splitting the assets of their business, they never spoke again. Adidas After the Split Adi Dossler named his new company Adidas after a shorter form of his name. In March 1949, Dossler came up with the idea of the Three Stripes trademark to set his shoes apart from all others. His passion for creating the optimal shoe for each specific sport paid off as athletes and coaches all around the world paid attention to his innovations and purchased his shoes in great numbers. Addy became known as the National Shoemaker as his shoes were worn by the German national football team and many other German athletes. In 1952, Adi expanded beyond shoes with a sports bag, followed by clothing, balls, and a number of other products, including the first track and field warm-up suit, all featuring the distinctive three stripes. By the 1960s, Adidas was the largest producer of sports shoes worldwide, with 22,000 pairs of shoes produced per day in a total of 16 factories. In the 1972 Olympic Games, 80% of track athletes that won gold medals were wearing Adidas shoes. Addy never lost his innovative spirit and continually evolved his products. Before his death in 1978, he registered hundreds of patents to protect his ideas from competitors, including his brother's company, Puma. Puma After the Split Rudolph established Puma and focused on developing a football boot with screw-in studs that he called the Super Atom. Although his shoes were worn by many people throughout Germany and a number of Olympic athletes, he struggled to get traction internationally. Rudy paid German sprinter Armin Hari to wear Pumas in the 100-meter sprint in the 1960 Summer Olympics, and he won gold wearing Pumas, but wore Adidas shoes for the medal ceremony, which infuriated both brothers. Rudolf created a much better partnership with Brazilian football legend Pele, who was wearing Pumas when he helped his team win the World Cup in 1960. And 1970. In 1967, the Puma Cat logo was created, and the company expanded beyond shoes to other types of athletic apparel. Just seven years later, Rudolph passed away, leaving Puma in the hands of his son, Armin, who was able to increase the popularity of the brand worldwide. Adidas and Puma Today in 1989, Adi and Kata's daughters made the difficult decision to sell Adidas as the sports shoe market became oversaturated and Adidas was losing millions of dollars a year. It wasn't until the company was listed on the stock market in 1995 that it began to bounce back. In 2006, Adidas bought its competitor Reebok for $3.8 billion. In 2018, Adidas had $24.5 billion in sales revenue, and the company continues to maintain its status as the second largest sporting goods producer in the world behind Nike. Puma went public in 1986, but after a period of poor sales, Rudolph's sons sold their father's company in 1989, the same year Adidas was sold. Sales have been up and down in the years since, but in 2007, the brand was purchased by the French conglomerate PPR, which also owns Gucci. 
The brand seems to be on the verge of a major resurgence after hiring Rihanna as creative director in 2014, launching a new line with Selena Gomez in 2018, signing the top two picks of the 2018 NBA draft to contracts, and naming Jay-Z as their creative director for Puma Basketball. None of the Dossler family members have any connection to either company and are hoping to put the family rivalry behind them. The Lesson One lesson we can learn from Adi and Rudy's story is how important passion is when undertaking any venture. If you're focused solely on the bottom line and driving profits, you may find success, but that success will be compounded if it's supported by a true passion for the product or service you're developing and your ultimate goal. And one more thing, it may not be a good idea to mix business and family, but if you decide to go that route, make sure you have clear lines of communication and defined expectations to help avoid unnecessary conflict. And a Luxers for some inspiration from the man behind Adidas's number one competitor, Nike. Check out Shoe Dog, a memoir by the creator of Nike, Phil Knight. This fascinating story of how Knight built the world's most successful athletic shoe company has more than 30,000 five-star reviews on Audible. And you can check it out yourself without worrying about the $28 price tag. Just go to alux.com slash free book and sign up. If it's your first time, you'll get the audio version of this book free thanks to our partnership with Audible. The Quote While researching his story, we came across this simple yet inspiring quote we'd like to share with you. It goes like this, Innovate, don't imitate. These words from Adolf Dassler remind us just how important it is to be leaders instead of followers when it comes to creating and driving progress. Question. Now that we're wrapping up this story, we'd love to know. Do you think Adidas will ever be able to reclaim the top spot among sporting goods producers? Or will Nike always be king? Let us know what you think in the comments. And of course, for sticking with us until the end, here's your bonus. When Adi and Rudy split, it divided their hometown of Herzegenerik as well. About one person in every household worked for either Puma or Adidas in the years after the split. The town became known as the Town of Bent Necks because people were always looking down to see which shoes others were wearing, to see which side they were truly on. Thank you for spending some time with us, Aluxers. Make sure to like and subscribe so you never miss another video. We also handpicked these videos, which we recommend you watch next. You can talk to us on all social medias or ask a question on our website, alux.com. Thank you for being an Aluxer, and we'll see you back tomorrow.